This week on ANN, an update on the situation of two imprisoned Adventists in Togo. Resolving differences of opinion on ordination. And impacting remote communities in Brazil with a message of hope. These stories and more, coming up. This is ANN, a service of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church. Thanks so much for joining us this week. First in the news, a petition with more than 16,000 signatures is on its way to Togo. The move is the latest step in the efforts by the Adventist Church to secure the release of two members imprisoned in the West African country. Adventist Pastor Antonio Montero and church member Bruno Ama were detained nearly a year ago after a Togolese man implicated them as conspirators in an alleged human blood trafficking network. Since then, the men have been held without bail. Adventist lawyers and human rights activists say the petition is a call for justice that demonstrates broad support for the plight of the two men. And in a related move, the government of Togo this week set a trial date for Montero. The trial will begin on January 29, but diplomatic efforts are expected to continue uninterrupted. We would have preferred that the case had been dismissed, but with a trial, you know, we are sure that it will be clear for all, including the authority, that our brother and Pastor Montero are innocent. Now we have an update on a youth congress that recently drew more than 1,500 young people from across the South Pacific to Brisbane, Australia. Record in Focus has this report. The participants came from around the South Pacific region with a contingent from the young and growing church in Papua New Guinea making up more than half the numbers. The Congress was the venue for the launch of the World Changes Bible, complete with discipleship materials and Bible studies. Youth leaders plan on providing Bibles and training to an initial group of 125,000 young people from around the South Pacific with further print runs to follow. The World's Changes theme was also expressed on the street, with young people collecting food in the suburbs and Brisbane CBD being the venue for a march against world hunger. Members of the Church's Theology of Ordination Committee say they're optimistic about resolving differences of opinion about the practice of ordination. The committee met for the first time last week near the Church's headquarters in the U.S. state of Maryland. Members heard presentations and reviewed papers representing a wide range of thought and opinion on the Christian tradition of ordination. Over the next year, they'll review the history of ordination, study its implications, and develop a Seventh-day Adventist theology of ordination. The second of four meetings is planned for July. The ongoing study of ordination is a response to increased discussion in recent years of the role of women in ministry. Adventist young people in Brazil are spending a week or more of their vacation this month to participate in service projects and evangelism. They're leading out in stop smoking programs and offering advice on stress, depression, alcoholism, and healthy living. The Mission Caleb Project in South America supports young people willing to volunteer for community service and evangelism activities in remote towns with little or no Adventist presence. Mission Caleb organizers say the project is making an impression on the community as young people impact the lives of area families. Displaced people in the United Kingdom enjoyed the comforts of home during the recent holiday season thanks to a shelter program run by Adventists in London area churches. Community ministries leaders provided food, shelter, shower facilities, haircuts, health and dental screenings and entertainment for members of the local homeless community. Volunteers say they're excited to offer the program again next holiday season. An Adventist writer in Myanmar is the winner of this year's Bible Society Writing Contest. Lah La Mint takes home a certificate and cash prize for her article about the reviving power of scripture. The nationwide competition is organized by the Myanmar Bible Society, a network of Christian churches in the country. Mint is a producer and scriptwriter for Adventist Media 
Now a note for Hope Channel Portuguese viewers in sub-Saharan Africa. The service provider for Adventist television in the region has changed FEC parameters for all satellite receivers. Receivers with automatic FEC settings won't be affected, but for manual receivers, here are the new settings. And finally this week, Adventist recording artist Wentley Phipps performed at this week's inaugural prayer service for U.S. President Barack Obama. Phipps sang Christian anthems including Amazing Grace with the Washington-based Children of the Gospel Choir. The interfaith service was held at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. The event brings Americans together to pray for the nation at the start of a new presidential term, a tradition in the U.S. since 1933. Coming up, how should Christians resolve doctrinal conflict? A magazine for pastors has advice. I love learning about my ancestors. It makes me feel like I have a place in history. And I always tell my family, the more you learn about your past, the more you understand the present. But the past doesn't have all the answers, especially about the future. There's so much uncertainty and so much fear in the world today. Which is why I'm so happy that I found something that brings together my past, my present, and my future. I know that no matter what happens, there is a plan. And this gives me hope. I learned to work as a young boy. I grew up in my father's scrap iron business, and I'm very thankful that I had that training. I'm also thankful that my father gave me the gift of poverty, which has uh, been a blessing to relate to others and to motivate to do better. Work is a privilege. An army of youth mobilized on the streets of the world, united in service, and driven by His command, go and do likewise. What would it look like? You. Join 8 million youth around the world as they leave the building to be the church. We can make a difference, one act of kindness at a time. Today, you are the sermon. Welcome back. What happens when members of the same denomination disagree over doctrinal issues? The February issue of Ministry Magazine offers counsel. Derek Morris has a preview. How do you deal with doctrinal differences in the church? That's a lead article in our February 2013 issue of Ministry Magazine. And I want to invite you, if you don't get a copy of Ministry Magazine, to go to our website. You'll find the lead article there, ministrymagazine.org. Dr. Paul Ratsara and Dr. Richard Davidson address the challenge even in the early Christian church. The major first controversy was over whether Jesus actually was raised from the dead or not. And they discovered, looking in Luke 24 and Acts 1 and 2, seven principles that helped come to a resolution over that doctrinal conflict. Those could help us today. One of them, the foundation of Scripture. Jesus began by pointing to the Scriptures. The other seven you'll find if you go to the website at ministrymagazine.org. But God wants us to come to doctrinal challenges, not with just our opinions, and certainly not with our weapons to shoot at other people. But God wants us to come to the Scripture, to have a Christ-centered hermeneutic 
that can bring peace, harmony, and unity. Because the reason we want to resolve doctrinal conflicts is that so we can move forward in mission. Go to ministrymagazine.org and be challenged by this new issue. Early Adventist pioneer Ellen White wrote 40 books and more than 4,000 articles during her ministry. For Cindy Tooch, White's continued focus on one particular subject is striking. What do you think Jesus liked to talk about more than anything else? The Kingdom of God, perhaps? Love? Forgiveness? Ellen White gives us some insightful insight when she comments in Selected Messages, Volume 1, page 156, Christ, the great teacher, had an infinite variety of subjects from which to choose, but the one upon which he dwelt most largely was the endowment of the Holy Spirit. Ellen White's own favorite topic was Jesus Christ, followed closely by thousands of references to the Holy Spirit. What about us? Who has our thoughts? Who or what is the theme of our prayers? Are we seeking the Holy Spirit in our own lives through meditation and prayer and study of the Word of God? Ellen White reminds us that to follow Jesus requires wholehearted conversion at the start of our spiritual journey and a repetition of this conversion every day. As our hearts are renewed to be like the heart of Jesus, we will be prepared to receive the latter rain, that special outpouring of the Spirit of God that increases our power to witness and prepares us for the chaotic events just ahead. Here's a promise for us from Testimonies, Volume 8, page 246. When we bring our hearts into unity with Christ and our lives into harmony with His work, the Spirit that fell on the day of Pentecost will fall on us. So what are we waiting for? Jesus tells us in Luke 11:13 that the Holy Spirit will be given to those who ask. Let's make praying for the Spirit a priority today. Justin Woods has our look at Adventist social media this week. We asked him to find out how Adventist Mission is reaching a new audience through Facebook and Twitter. Hans, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So tell me, what is Adventist Mission doing with social media these days? Well, Adventist Mission has been focusing mostly on our Facebook page because uh, it gives us so many options for uh, videos and posts and comments back and forth between our users and us. We have uh, five different Facebook pages actually, one in English, one in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and we just started one in Korean. Total we have about 126,000 uh, users, which is very exciting. Wow. That's a lot of likes. It is. It is a lot of likes. Wow. So what are your plans for the future? Well, now that we have this base of so many users, we're hoping to push out more um, stories of what's going on in the world field and then hoping we'll, we'll get people to comment back on that. Because we really want to start a conversation with the 17 million Adventists around the world, as For many sure. of them as we can, and engage them in mission rather than just preaching to them. Uh, we want to engage with them and have a conversation and find ways that they can be part of sharing God's love around the world. That's awesome. Thanks, Hans. A new book by Adventist evangelist Mark Finley unpacks the biblical truth about end time events. Pacific Press Publishing Association shared more for this month's ANN Book Review. The Middle East is a powder keg about ready to explode. Recent attacks on the American Embassy in Egypt and attacks on the embassy in the northern African country of Libya have revealed again the very tenuous situation in the Middle East. In the center of it all is Israel. Will Israel be invaded by Muslim powers? What's the future of the nation of Israel? What does prophecy say about Israel? What does the Bible teach about end time events as it relates to Israel? My new book, End Time Hope, answers those questions. It answers them from a solidly biblical perspective. It focuses the attention of the reader where the real battle is taking place. And it looks not to an earthly temple in Jerusalem, but to the heavenly temple. This book is needed today to help answer the questions that are being asked about what's going on there in the Middle East. End Time Hope is a book that you can give to your friends at this time of Earth's history. 
why not get 10 copies of End Time Hope and give them to your friends and your neighbors. They'll thank you for it. You can order End Time Hope online at AdventistBookCenter.com. Adventist World Radio is expanding its ministry in Myanmar. Dowell Chow explains how local FM stations are helping spread the church's message of hope. Myanmar is the current name of the country we all know as Burma. Myanmar is a very diverse country. There's 135 dif different ethnic groups speaking different languages right within that one country. For the last 20 years, Adventist World Radio has produced programs in the Burmese language. And later on, we did the Korean language and other languages and aired those programs from our station in Guam towards Myanmar. More recently, we have been offered the opportunity of putting programs on local FM stations within the country of Myanmar. This is the first time. And today, we're preparing programs not only in Burmese, but in six other languages. And there are plans to add six more languages, making a dozen, so they can reach more people living across the country, speaking different languages. We also have many books, church books, that have been translated into the Burmese language. When I was there the last time, I saw those books all bailed up in packages, in waterproof packaging, because they could be rained on or they could fall in the river. But the people do that so they can deploy those books into the different regions of the country, carrying the message as well with the radio programs. Today, Myanmar is hearing the message through Adventist World Radio, and we ask you to continue praying for the people of this great country. Still ahead on ANN, inspiring a global movement against child abuse. But up next, a preview of this week's Bible study lesson. The Great Controversy is a book of actuality and that uh, we can uh, easily uh, read it again and uh, understand maybe better what is in history and if they have to share it with someone, with friends or, or other people, that uh, they, they will have the courage maybe to, 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 to put themselves in, in, into the picture, in, into the story. Welcome back. This week's Bible study lesson explores how Scripture as a whole reinforces the Genesis account of creation. Adventist World Church President Ted Wilson has a preview. In this week's Sabbath School lesson, we see how the theme of creation is woven throughout the Bible, providing clear evidence that all of the Bible writers accepted the Genesis account. In the book of Job and in the Psalms, the creation theme is expressed through beautiful poetry. The prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Amos, Jonah, and Zechariah all testify of God as the Creator. In the New Testament, the Gospel writers, as well as 
Peter, James, Jude, and Paul make reference to the Genesis creation account. In Revelation 14, we hear the first of the three angels urging us to worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. I hope you'll take time this week to carefully consider creation a biblical theme. God has created everything by his word. May the Lord bless you as you continue learning about our wonderful creator, redeemer, and our friend. The Seven Campaign is a global grassroots initiative to advocate for the end of child abuse. This week, Linda Co explains how children's ministries leaders are partnering with the church's risk management organization to raise awareness. Protecting children from abuse is our responsibility as children's ministry leaders and teachers. Children have been entrusted to us by their parents to attend our programs. Hence, it is of utmost importance that we care for them and not allow harm to come upon them. Unfortunately, in the world today, millions of children are hurting from abuse and neglect. Statistics show that 36% of girls and 29% of boys have suffered child sexual abuse. In fact, hundreds of others have been forced into child labour, prostitution and pornography. We need to take action. We need to join the seven campaign Stop Child Abuse Initiative by the Adventist Risk Management. And what is this about? The seven campaign is a global awareness campaign to advocate for an end to the abuse of children around the world through seven different ways. It aims to raise awareness on the need to create safe communities to protect the vulnerability and innocence of all children. Visit the Seven Campaign website to download resources, videos and other useful materials to help you make this happen. So use your voice, your life, your influence to make a positive difference for children. Smartphones are not only changing the way people access the internet, but also providing new opportunities to create and publish online content. Megan Brauner reviews two free website builder apps on this week's Tech Corner. Devices like the iPhone and the Samsung Galaxy phones are making a difference in the way people use the internet. Some analysts estimate about 13% of web traffic from around the world comes from a mobile device. Two apps called Zapped and Weber are taking the internet and smartphones to the next level. Both of these free apps allow you to create a custom web page in mere minutes, all from the comfort of your own iPhone, and you don't need to know even a little bit of code. With Zapped, all you need is your phone camera, photo library, and two working thumbs. Before you create your first page, you can set a custom URL for all your future pages. Start a new project by choosing your favorite layout from dozens of free options. Next, upload some images, add captions, and choose a category for your page, like travel, events, or food. Zapped allows you to edit your photos inside the app using very intuitive tools. You can also choose from a variety of effects that are similar to Instagram filters. Once you've added all your text and photos and are ready to publish, you can share your new page link through Facebook, Twitter, and email with one click. Weber is a similar free app. I found the interface a little easier to use initially, but it doesn't have the photo editing built into the app the way Zapped does, and I didn't like the sharing options as well as Zapped. Of course, neither of these apps are meant for professional website building. They are perfect for creating event sites or sharing information quickly with a group. My apologies to our Android users. Sadly, I didn't find a good equivalent app. But if you know of a free Android version of Zapped or Weber, make sure to tell me about it on Twitter. For those of you who are iPhone or iPad users, make sure to download Zapped and Weber from the App Store while they're still free. The Adventist Church's Literature Evangelism Program is an opportunity for young people to learn lessons outside of the classroom. Howard Figo shares some of the benefits on this month's publishing feature. Please let me share with you seven reasons why the young people in our church should be literature evangelists. First, it is an evangelistic outreach. This is the first reason why Adventist students must engage in literature evangelism during their student life. There are six more reasons laid out by God and outlined by His Messenger. Listen to this clear description by Ellen G. White. It is a divine plan. 
the student literature evangelism program is instituted by God. It is considered best education. Why? Because in this work you will find the opportunity to speak the words of life. For it is good ministerial training. This ministry allows you to encounter all kinds of people and meet their needs. Five, it gives practical education. Many of the students in our canvassing programs can learn practical lessons not received in the classroom. And six, the student will experience companionship with Christ. According to the Lord's promise in the Bible, Jesus says, Therefore go, and surely I am with you. Seven, it enriches the student's faith. As you cherish the thought that Christ is your companion in this ministry, you will feel a holy awe and a sacred joy amid all the trying but inspiring experiences. I invite you to start your adventure of faith and service for the Master during your youth. The time is now. Now let's turn to Benjamin Baker for a look at Adventist history. This week, one of the first missionaries to India impacts marginalized women in the country. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History, an eventful one for the unstoppable Advent movement in Asia. Kyo Hoi Chi Nam, or the Church Compass, was launched on January 20, 1916, becoming the official organ of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Korea. For a quarter of a century, the magazine appeared monthly until it was discontinued in August 1941 due to World War II hostilities. However, Kyo Hoi Chi Nam reappeared in December 1944 after Japanese occupation ended and is still going strong today, having outlasted war and oppression. Also, at the close of World War II, Saniku Gakuin, or Japan Missionary College, reopened on January 23, 1947. The school was closed down by government order in December 1943, a time when Christianity was aggressively suppressed in the island nation. But, like their neighbors in the Great Hope to the West, Japanese Adventists survived the global conflict with a revitalized mission. On January 23, 1895, 28-year-old Californian Georgia Anna Burris stepped into the masses of Calcutta, one of the first Adventist missionaries in India. Burris, who later married one Luther Burgess, surrendered her life to the needy, working as a self-supporting missionary among the marginalized women of the country for over four decades. That was This Week in Adventist History. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In the meantime, follow us on Twitter. You can connect with other Adventists worldwide and join our weekly social media conversations. Just search for Adventist News on Twitter.com. Our good news for this week comes from Isaiah. The passage says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. And that's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and video. Until next time, God bless.